I'm Simon Jones. I'm uh, Vice Principal of Spurgeon's College. I'm responsible for ministerial formation and training. I think, um, like a lot of people, uh, we were pitched into lockdown and this new uh, way of being that um, was unexpected and unprepared for. Um, but it came at the end of a, quite a long period for me of really thinking about where we are as a, as a church community, uh, how we relate to our neighbours and the neighbourhoods in which we find ourselves. And so I wanted to set out to explore uh, some of those sorts of questions. Uh, what difference will lockdown make to us? Uh, and particularly as we emerge from lockdown, uh, what, what do we think we need to be asking ourselves uh, in order for us to be effective and relevant in terms of the mission that we're involved in, in our neighbourhoods, around the places where we both live and probably work and worship? Well, I... Um, I decided to use an idea that I've used in a couple of pieces that I've written uh, for other um, outlets, uh, which is this idea of liminality, of a time that we enter, which is a time of transition, but it's not just a time of chaos. It's a time of structured movement from one thing to another thing. So uh, one of the points I make is that, um, being in a liminal place is not just something we struggle to get through, but it's something that we can see as a means of growing into what it is that uh, God wants us to be after uh, we emerge from lockdown. So having um, taken that uh, idea, which I explain in the article, having come from uh, social anthropology and sociology and has come into missional thinking through uh, particularly Alan Roxburgh's work, uh, in his book, Missional. Uh, having taken that as the core idea, I then wanted to ask some questions about how do we think uh, mission and engagement with our neighbourhoods would look uh, post the lockdown, uh, when actually, while superficially everything looks the same uh, and everything seems to be where we left it, uh, actually things are very, very different. And so I wanted to explore those sorts of things. One of the points I make in the article is that I think as uh, as Christian people, we're often very good at supplying answers, but we're not really very good at listening to what it is people are asking and the kind of conversations that are going on. So one of the things that I, I really encourage people to do uh, in this article is to go out and listen to what our neighbours are saying. And this can be done individually. Somebody can just go out and have a wonder and eavesdrop. But it can be done in a more structured way of churches and, and, and Bible study groups actually going out and, and having intentional conversations with people where actually what they are trying to do, what the group is trying to do, is to hear what our neighbours are saying. So that's one of the things that I'm particularly keen to encourage. I think another thing that I'm keen to encourage is that we tap into uh, the uh, the depth of our tradition uh, of being able to address God in lament and grief. Uh, it seems to me that as we come out of lockdown, there are going to be an awful lot of people who have unresolved grief because of what they have lost through the pandemic. It could be that they have lost relatives. It could be that they've lost work, jobs. They've lost connection with people. Uh, and I think the Christian tradition has a, has a deep well of uh, language about lamentation that I think we could usefully deploy missionally uh, as we emerge from lockdown. And finally, I think one of the listening uh, things that we need to be doing is is getting together with other people who are wanting to make the neighbourhoods that we live in better places. Uh, so what I've been struck by through lockdown are the numbers of people who have been volunteering to help 
uh, with shopping, with uh, providing food for people who need it, uh, visiting, doing a whole range of activities that in previous times we thought belonged to the church. That was the kind of thing we did. Uh, but what we've discovered is that there are a whole load of neighborhood groups and they're not only doing it, they're doing it better than we had done it. So can we go and join them? Can we go and work alongside them? Can we exchange stories and ways of being? Can we exchange the kind of values that we live by in order to make these projects even better than they are? Not by going out and starting our own things, but by going and working alongside people who are already doing things in our neighborhoods and then seeing where God pops up in the conversations that ensue.